Welcome to part one of the brief history of Valiant Comics. This will be a two-part series. I would like to do follow-up videos in the future, going into more detail about the individual characters. If this at all interests you, let me know in the comments section below. Also, if you are a fan of Valiant Comics, I would be curious to know who your favorite characters are. Drop that in the comments section as well. Let's jump in. Valiant Comics, a comic book company that rose, fell, and then somehow rose again almost over a decade later. Today we take a brief look back at the history of Valiant Comics. Valiant Comics was founded by a group of investors, and this man, some or most of you may recognize him. This is Jim Shooter. A brief history of Jim Shooter, for those of you who do not know who he is. Shooter was born September 27, 1951 in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. At age 14, he became a published writer and artist on Legion of Superheroes, Supergirl, Superman, Action Comics, Adventure Comics, the list goes on. By 1978, he became the editor-in-chief of Marvel Comics. Jim Shooter helped to bring life back into the comic industry. His work would bring a huge boost to Marvel's success. He introduced crossover events such as Marvel Super Hero Contest of Champions and then the much-loved Secret Wars series. Secret Wars would feature the origin of the black costume that Spider-Man would wear. A costume that turned out to be a living symbiotic entity. One that would one day become the villainous and then heroic Venom. However, it is important to note that the first appearance of the costume was in Amazing Spider-Man 252, by several months. Jim Shooter would also vouch for the creators at Marvel. He helped to secure them creator royalties for their creations. He was also instrumental in instituting the art return program, which would return the original art to the creator. His career as editor-in-chief at Marvel Comics was considered controversial. John Romita Sr. said of him, Shooter had been great for the first two or three years. He got the creative people treated with more respect, got us sent to conventions first class with our ways paid, and we thought the world of him. Then his Secret Wars was a big hit, and after that he decided he knew everything and he started changing everybody's stuff. John Byrne said, Shooter came along just when Marvel needed him, but he stayed too long. Shooter was known for making enemies of several well-known and established creators at Marvel Comics. Notorious for exerting his editorial control. Several Marvel creators would leave due to conflict and would instead go work for the competition, DC Comics. Several stories depict Shooter's time at Marvel Comics as widely homophobic. Ultimately, Shooter was fired from Marvel Comics on April 15, 1987. Jim Shooter and a group of investors tried to buy Marvel Comics in 1988. However, they were outbid by Ronald Perlman. Shooter and his investors wasted no time and started Voyager Communications. Under the Valiant Comics name, they began publishing titles. Valiant's first titles were based on video games from Nintendo as well as wrestling comics for the WWF World Wrestling Federation. They began with Super Mario Bros., Legend of Zelda, WWF Battlemania, and others. Valiant stepped into the superhero arena in 1992 after purchasing licensing rights from Gold Key Comics. With the Gold Key licensing rights came the backbone of what would become the Valiant universe. Magnus the Robot Fighter, Solar Man of the Atom, Turok, Son of Stone. The first to get published would be Magnus the Robot Fighter, a futuristic romp taking place in 4000 AD throughout a city called Northam that spans the entire North American continent. Magnus, as the title implies, fights robots. He was raised as an infant and taught by a robot known as 1A a self-aware robot that was the first of his kind. Magnus was to defend Northam from evil robots and from evil humans that used robots to harm other humans. Magnus was so strong that he could break steel with his bare hands. 
In the backup story of Magnus, from issues 5 to 8, the character Rai would first appear. The issues were flip book comics. Rai issues 1 through 4 would be printed this way, until getting his own singular title. Rai took place in 4001 AD. Instead of North Am, Rai protected a futuristic Japan. The entire island of Japan was encased inside what is known as the Host, which is a massive robot. The character Rai is only one of several heroes given the title of Rai. He is a genetically created protector of the Host's will. Designed in the image of a character from Valiant's 20th century, known as Bloodshot, who would first appear in Eternal Warrior No. 4, and in Rai Issue 0, both published in the same month, November of 1992. However, before Bloodshot and Rai got their own titles, the second hero-based Gold Key licensed Valiant comic was released in 1991. This series was Solar Man of the Atom, written by Jim Shooter and featuring the art of Barry Windsor Smith and Bob Layton and others. The story featured the origin of Phil Selesky, who would become Solar. The character would face off against another version of himself, who intended to destroy the world. The next arc would introduce the spider aliens, which would play a major role in the story of the later XO Manowar series. In Solar issue number three, we would meet Toyo Harada, the leader of the Harbinger Foundation. Harada would become a much loved and much hated character in the Valiant universe. In issue seven of Solar, Man of the Atom, we would meet the predecessor to a future fan favorite. Someone wearing what is called XO armor. But first we would see the beginning of the Harbinger series, about a group of young misfit psi aughts, evolved humans that have superhuman powers. The series follows Peter Stanchek and a group of psi aughts of the Harbinger Foundation that soon discover that their leader Toyo Harada, the most powerful psi aught on Earth, is an evil megalomaniac. Luckily, Peter Stanchek rivals Harada in power. Around the same time as the release of Harbinger and Exo Manowar, we would see another fan favorite hit the shelves. The Shadow Man. When Jack Boniface becomes the Shadow Man, he is steeped in voodoo, a powerful magic. He possesses paranormal strength, endurance, agility and reflexes, night vision, regenerative healing, and several other powers. He was a very popular character in the early 90s. Steven Tyler of the band Aerosmith even made an appearance in an issue of The Shadow Man. The Shadow Man would protect him from Master Dark, who wanted Steven Tyler's soul. Next, we see the publishing of Exo Manowar. Eric of Dacia was a Visigoth of the 5th century AD, around the time of the fall of the Roman Empire. After the deaths of his parents at the hands of Roman soldiers, Eric dedicated his life to fighting against Rome with the help of his uncle Alaric. However, one night, his people were attacked by what he thought were demons. The beings would be revealed as the spider aliens that first appeared in Solar, Man of the Atom. Eric fought back, but was quickly put down and rendered unconscious. He would awaken on a spaceship traveling in deep space. He would spend several years as a prisoner of the spider aliens. During an attempted escape, Eric found his way into a room that contained a suit of armor. The armor is the Exo Manowar class armor, a sentient weapon known as Shanhara. Eric bonded with the armor and became its host. Donning it, Eric easily escapes the spider aliens and returned to Earth. However, due to time dilation during faster than light space travel, Eric arrives in a much changed time. He touches down on 20th century Earth, wearing one of the most powerful weapons in the universe. The Roman Empire, his enemy, long gone. The world was a very different place. He had to adapt and learn to live in a time that was very unfamiliar to his barbaric ways. Valiant Comics quickly took the comic world by storm. In 1992, Valiant's editor-in-chief, Jim Shooter, was given the Lifetime Achievement Award for co-creating the Valiant Universe, alongside Stan Lee for his work shaping the Marvel Comics Universe. 
However, later that year, Jim Shooter suddenly left Valiant. According to Valiant's publisher Stephen Masterski, Jim had a different idea as to the direction of the company, and he was asked to leave. Before Jim Shooter left, he would co-create several characters and conceive of an event that he thought would revolutionize the concept of crossovers. The 18-issue crossover event began in August of 1992. The story was called Unity. Similar to his Secret Wars crossover for Marvel, multiple characters throughout the Valiant universe would be pulled into a singular story. However, instead of making a separate title, the crossover would weave through the existing titles. The Unity crossover event would span all of the ongoing titles of 1992 and also launch several new titles. Archer and Armstrong and Eternal Warrior started around this time. The villain of the title was Mother God. She wanted to warp reality to rewrite and restore her universe. This is how characters from the 21st and 41st centuries come together. The crossover event was well received and to this day other companies use that model to do the same thing. Some would say it is now overused and tiresome. For the next two years, Valiant would see new characters hitting the shelves. Eternal Warrior. An immortal warrior named Galad, chosen to protect the Geomancers. Throughout his long life, he is constantly in conflict with the immortal enemy, who continues to reincarnate with his memories intact and continues to cause chaos. Eternal Warrior was created by Jim Shooter and John Dixon. Another title, Archer and Armstrong, a duo of adventurous heroes. Aram, also known as Armstrong, is the immortal brother of both the Eternal Warrior and Ivar the Time Walker. The character, Archer, is a young, talented man with incredible skills and abilities. He is sent by the cult known as the Sect to kill Armstrong. Instead, they become best buddies that team up to take down the sect. Archer and Armstrong was created by Barry Windsor Smith. The title Bloodshot was about a mafia hitman who was injected with nanomachines. He would then become a soldier with no memories of his past. Bloodshot was created by Kevin Van Hook, the late Don Perlin, and Bob Layton. In 1993, Valiant Comics would collaborate with another young comic book company of the 90s, a company that was formed by the industry's leading artists of the time. Todd McFarlane, Rob Liefeld, Mark Silvestri, Jim Lee, Jim Valentino, Eric Larson, and Wils Protasio formed Image Comics in 1992. Through a series of conversations, Image's Jim Lee and Valiant's publisher Stephen Masursky came up with the idea to do a crossover valiant characters and image characters in the same universe and on the same page. The title of the crossover would come to be known as Deathmate. Deathmate, unfortunately, would not be well received. It was constantly missing deadlines, underselling expectations. It was overpriced and widely considered a complete disaster. It negatively impacted retailers over loss of interest due to a few issues being so late that Diamond distributors canceled the title. Comics historian Jason Sachs wrote, Many consider Deathmate, the comic book that single-handedly put an end to the industry's prosperous times and the biggest reason why so many comic book stores closed its doors for good. He went on to state that, in truth, there was plenty of blame to go around. Regardless, the comic industry was experiencing a decline in popularity and revenue stream. Valiant Comics would also face hard times. Valiant would try many methods to engage their audience and try to bring in more readers. They were not afraid to experiment and try innovative ways of making a comic book entertaining. One of their attempts was called Valiant Vision. Valiant Vision was an innovative way to read a comic book. The reader would wear a pair of the patented Valiant Vision glasses to view three-dimensional images. Unlike the 3D illustrations that came before, Valiant Vision allowed the reader to choose whether they wanted to wear the glasses. The comics could be read with or without wearing them. Other 3D comics could only be read with the glasses on. You could acquire the Valiant Vision Starter Kit, which came with 3D glasses, an instruction and test comic, and a fold-out poster of Solar, Man of the Atom. Valiant Vision would last a short time. 
It was featured in the solar issues 29, 33, 34, and 35, and would also be used in the first five issues of the Psy Lords comic series. In 1994, Voyager Communications was purchased by video game developer Acclaim for a staggering $65 million. Their intent was to make several video games from the characters in the Valiant universe. And although they did create a number of games based on Valiant property, the games were mostly considered flops with a few good titles. The Shadow Man game is much loved to this day and was recently remastered. Turok Dinosaur Hunter was one of the top-selling Nintendo 64 games on the life of the console. Other games included Armor Reigns Project Swarm and Iron Man and Exo Manowar in Heavy Metal. In 2004, facing financial ruin and filing for bankruptcy, Acclaim auctioned off Valiant's original characters. The licensed characters Magnus, Solar, and Turok reverted back to Gold Key Comics. As a side note, Gold Key Comics would be eventually bought by DreamWorks Animation in 2012, who were then subsequently bought by Universal Studios in 2016. We would not see another Valiant comic until 2012. However, when Valiant made its return, it was met with huge success. 90s Valiant Comics was a company that focused on character-centric stories, and stories that were massive and interconnected with everything in the Valiant universe. A cohesive, well-put-together universe, diverse characters, interesting points of view, and this would follow over in their 2012 return. Join me next time as I discuss who bought Valiant and what their plans were, and ultimately Valiant's fate in the current comic book world. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Hit that notification bell to get notified when we drop new content. And with that, I will see myself out.